Hey there folks, Graham here and welcome to the channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell, but for now, let's get started. The Synth 1, probably the most downloaded free VST in the history of VSTs. It was launched in 2002 and so has been around for nearly 20 years, but it's had a few updates along the way and is based on the iconic Nord Lead 2, an analog modeling synthesizer that was launched in 1997. If you use VSTs and you don't have this in your arsenal, you probably should. After all, it's free, it sounds great, and if you're after presets, well, have a look around. Some say 15,000, some say 25,000, some say 50,000 presets are available. It's insane. This thing has a massive following, so what is it and what's all the fuss about? Well, what we have is a virtual analog synthesizer that's very well designed, simply laid out and very powerful. So starting with the oscillator section, we've got two main oscillators and then a sub oscillator, which is linked to oscillator one. We've got a modulation envelope section, and then we've got some standard controls for mixing between the oscillators, uh, changing the pulse width modulation for square and pulse waveforms, uh, changing the fixed phase settings between the two oscillators, and then also a fine tuning function that is applied to both oscillators. Oscillator one has four waveforms. So we have a sine, a saw, a triangle and a square. Oscillator 1 also has a detune function, so if I put it on saw wave, what this effectively does is splits the saw wave in two and then detunes each half, one up and one down, so you get this sort of detune super saw effect and then there is also an fm modulation which can create some wild sounds where oscillator 2 is used to modulate oscillator 1 so just as very simply i'll, I'll flick the fm modulation and you can start to get some wild and wacky sounds we then have the sub oscillator, which is effectively linked to oscillator one. This again has the same four waveforms, but they can be tuned either at the same pitch or one octave below the main oscillator, and then you can adjust the mix. So for example, we had our saw. If we bring in a square wave, an octave below, and then I bring up the mix on the sub. <laughs> You can see the effect there. You can mix between the two and you can obviously mix and match waveforms. Oscillator 2 also then has four waveforms, but the sine waveform from oscillator 1 is replaced with a noise waveform in oscillator 2. There's also a ring modulator. So this is the square wave. And with the ring modulator. And then there's also a synchronized function which synchronizes oscillator two to oscillator one. So here I've mixed oscillator one and two together with a ring modulator on oscillator two and the saw wave on oscillator one. If I synchronize them, oscillator two is now playing exactly the same waveform, a saw wave as oscillator one and they are synchronized together. And finally for oscillator two, there's then a track control button, which allows the pitch to track with the keys that you press. If track is on, then the pitch will track up and down the keyboard. If track is off, then no matter what note you play, the same pitch will always be sounded. And there's also then a pitch control button and a fine tune of the pitch for oscillator two. Underneath oscillator two, there's also then a modulation envelope setting. Here you can set the target for modulation to oscillator two, FM modulation or pulse width modulation. And for example, here I've got the destination set as oscillator two. And if I fiddle around with the attack and decay knobs, you'll start to hear the effect. <laughs> So effectively that controls the modulation of the target source using the attack decay and the amount you want that to be modulated by. 
And finally, under the oscillator section, we have buttons for changing the pitch or transposing the pitch. So if I just keep pressing the same key on the keyboard, you can't see, but I'm pressing the same key on the keyboard there and moving the pitch up and down with the transpose. I can mix between oscillator one and oscillator two, or indeed oscillator one and its sub oscillator and oscillator two, if I had the sub oscillator activated. But just to give an example of that, I've got a square wave on oscillator two and a saw wave on oscillator one, so I can move the mix. between the two of those. Um, I then also have a pulse width modulation. So if I set both of these to square waves, I can change the pulse width modulation of that square wave. So sounds a bit like this. I then have a phase dial which changes the fixed phase setting between the two oscillators and an overall fine tune function which is applied to both oscillators at the same time. So moving on from the oscillators we then have the amplifier section. This has a standard ADSR envelope gain and velocity level so the attack changes obviously the attack. the sound coming in and then the standard decay sustain and release so low release and long release a gain switch for the volume and then the velocity which if set to zero then effectively everything will be played at a fixed velocity. Now, no matter how hard you hit the keyboard, and if you set it up to its highest level, then you get the much more nuanced playing in terms of how hard you hit the keys. Below that, we have our filter section with standard ADSR envelopes and an amount dial. We have frequency, resonance, saturation, uh, and tracking of how the uh, velocity triggers the filters. We have the frequency, which sounds like this. Resonance. Pretty much standard controls. The saturation. And then we have our filter types. So we've got low pass 12, low pass 24, high pass, band pass. And then this last one, which is low pass diode ladder, which is a sort of a darker, fatter filter pretty similar to that found on the Roland TB303 bass machine. So these sound like this, the low pass 12, low pass 24, the high pass 12, the band pass 12, and the low pass diode ladder, which you can see is that little bit thicker and darker than the standard low pass filters. Moving across, we then have our effects section. So if I turn that on, we've got an analog distortion, a second analog distortion, a digital distortion, a bit crusher decimator, a ring modulator, a compressor, and then a single phase, dual phase, four phase, or six phase phaser effects. Below the effects, we then have an equalizer section for controlling the overall EQ frequency of the synthesizer, um, including its tone and also left and right panning. So from left, to right and back into the middle. Then there's our tempo delay section, which if I just turn that on, we've got a stereo delay, a cross feedback delay, which sounds very similar, but there are some slight nuances when you start playing with the controls and then a ping pong delay from left to right. 
all of these delays, you can control the time and the speed of them, the spread, the feedback, the dry and wet as to how much of the effect you hear, etc. And below that, we have our chorus stroke flanger settings. So if I turn those on, we can have a sort of a single signal, a double signal, or a four time signal. And the more you play with the depths, the rates, the feedback, etc., etc., the bigger the difference between those different settings. And then finally, over here on the right hand side, we have our voice settings. So we have polyphonic, monophonic and legato with up to 32 voices of polyphony. We then have our unison and portmento settings and the unison offers up to eight voices. So this is two voice unison, six voice unison, eight voice unison. We can also detune the unison settings and the phasing. So if we mess with the phase switch. Or the detuning. We can have quite a marked impact on the unison settings. Moving on, we then have the LFO section down in the sort of bottom left. Effectively, we have two LFOs available. Each one of these can drive either oscillator 2, oscillator 1 and 2, the filter frequency, the amp, the pulse width modulation, the FM modulation or the panning. So if I put this on filter um, and then I turn the LFO on, I then have a sawtooth LFO which sounds like this, a triangle LFO which sounds like this, a sine wave which is slightly different to the triangle. I then have a square which is a much harsher disconnect if I compare it to the sawtooth for example. quite a different shape and then we then have a stepped random and a smooth random which are effectively almost like the sort of the sample and hold that you see on some synthesizers which gives a very just sort of random modulated effect. For each of these LFOs you can sync the tempo etc to the tempo in your door or you can just change the speed yourself so for example Oops, let's turn it on. And you can also change the amount that the LFO will modulate the source. Moving on from LFOs, we're nearly there. We've just got the arpeggiator and the MIDI section to go. So arpeggiator section, first of all, this is a pretty sort of standard, simple arpeggiator. I'll turn all the LFOs, etc. off. If I turn the LFO on, I've got the type. So I can have up, down, up, down or random. And then I can have it spread over one octave, two octaves, three octaves or four octaves. I can control the tempo of the arpeggiator and I control the gate of the arpeggiator. So for example, I'll start an arp going up and down, up, that's down and then finally random. All of those you can see are playing over two octaves. So if I put them on four octaves, And then I can change the gate. And even the speed. So quite a well functioning little arpeggiator included into the synth. Now we really are on the home straight, just two sections left to go. The first of which is the wheel and MIDI controls. Here you can assign whatever you want to control whatever MIDI functions you want. So for example, I've got the pitch bend and the mod wheel here, the pitch bend controlling LFO depth and the mod wheel controlling LFO speed. You can change your sources, mod wheel, breath controller, foot controller, etc. 
and you can change what they are controlling. So for example, oscillator one, detuning, FM modulation, the sub oscillator levels, the pitch, etc. Anything in this list can be modulated using anything in this list over here. And then finally, we have some universal controls at the bottom, the overall volume for the entire synth, our preset section, which if I click on that, brings up my banks of presets. I've loaded a few in here myself that I've downloaded from various places. As I said earlier, there are 50,000 presets potentially. I know there's at least 25,000 that you can download. This has 100 banks in here. If I open up, you can load in 100 banks of up to 128 presets in each bank. So that's 12,800 presets that you can have stored in here. If you've got more than that, then you can swap them in and out as you require them. And then last but not least, there are two final buttons, the right button for writing and saving changes to any patches that you've made, and also the options button, which if I bring this up here, brings up, let me just move that over a little bit, this brings up various sort of behind the scenes things in terms of where all your patches are saved, how big you want the VST to be. I've got this magnified to 250%. You can even change the color. So if I click on these, click on OK, I can change the color if you really want to change the skin on your VST because you don't like the plain basic color that it comes in. You can even make it red to make it look like a Nord Lead 2, which, as we said, is what it's based on in the first place. So that's pretty much the Synth 1 and hopefully everything you might need to know about it. I think I've covered pretty much all bases. Um, if you do want to get hold of this free VST, then head on over to, I believe it's kvraudio.com where you can download it. I'll leave a link in the description below. I don't get any money or payments from this. This is just something uh, that I've downloaded myself and have enjoyed using and thought I'd do a little video um, for other people out there who aren't familiar with this VST. If you have enjoyed this video, then please remember to like, subscribe and ring that bell for more content in the future. And also, if you've got any questions, then please feel free to leave them in the usual place down below. And I shall try to answer those questions, as many of them as possible. Or indeed, if you just want to leave comments or any other feedback, then all feedback is greatly appreciated. But for now, I've been Graham. Take care and catch you later. Hmm.